Hi and uh, welcome to part 3 of this uh, mechanical rigging tutorial in 3ds Max. So this time we are going to create this grabber mechanism. Also going to show that how you can have two sliders doing the exact same thing. Okay, so let's start. Okay, so uh, let's start by isolating the grabber layer and set this as active layer. Then we are going to, I'm just going to delete, delete these parts because I'm going to rig run and just copy it. So, how does this mechanism actually work? Um, there's a screw inside here, so when this rotates, these parts move down, and this uh, claw is connected to that, so when these move down, this will sort of rotate outwards. Let's let's make some helpers first. I line it here. And we see it's not centered, so let's make sure it's centered. So grabber. Okay, got it like a zero. And since this part is moving, I consider this sort of the toe of the Ica chain, and this is sort of the hip. So this is going to be the parent. Grabber, IK1, I just make a zero, zero 01 afterwards because I'm going to copy it around. So it'll be IK2, okay, I just take this away so I'm sh sure it's in center in the y-axis and we're going to have the uh, actual uh, control for opening here Center it. I'm just going to set it at the bottom here. Minimum in the C. Grabber. Open. Control. I also have a sort of a zero helper on this one. I use these uh, zero helpers a lot instead of yeah, you could. There's a function called freeze transform, but I always prefer just to put another helper there. But I guess it's a matter of taste. I feel it's often easier to, to move it around afterwards. You just have a helper there instead of having the store in and controller here. 
we will have a list controller and the, the sort of zero will be in its own controller. But I just prefer it having it this in like this. So link this to this to this and last to this here. This area is sort of in the center, and uh, so we can use this to rotate around after. I'm also going to that to that one, these to that one. Um, I'll make the IK chain, IK solver, history independent, and link it to the controller. So just let me animate it some frames here. This stuff also need to be linked to that control. But not that one. Yes, that's right. But what happened here? Maybe I messed something up. I will check it later and see. Now let us copy this and the IK. We're going to here, reference coordinate system, we're going to pick pick this one and use pivots center we're going to use set here to use transform coordinate center this means we now rotate the whole selection from here right the degrees three times And for the actual control here, we're going to make, we're going to set up a position constraint on this, do a target here, call it open target, instance is okay, link it to that one, make it yellow, assign it as the position constraint target. And we made an extra slider here, so you can move that over. So I will go back here and world and pivot. Then we are going to select this one called slider value. Copy this uh, C position expression and paste on the position constraint weight as an instance. So now this slider controls. So a benefit of using constraints, position constraints, is that you can always tweak 
the distance is going to be moved after you have set up the sliders and control and everything. So now I can just tweak this. If you don't want this to open that much. If you have set up like a slider with real world values, you would have to, if you sort of make, um, uh, in, with parameter editor, and you set it world units, and you make your slider to be zero to, I don't know, 50 centimeters. And after you made it, you need to go here again and and choose edit and select it and go here and add it the range but it's so much easier just to move this target in least at least in my opinion So last we're going to link this up to the this one, I believe. Yeah, control grabber. So we need to have the stuff that's not linked to anything. By that I choose I press patch up all the way. So this stuff is not linked to anything. And it breaks. Why did it do that though? Ah. I think this one was not linked to that one. I set up a zero helper, but I got forgot to actually link it. Then I will just have to go in the position. Just double click on the position X, Y, Z here below the constraint and align it so now it should work so this is <laughs> sort of problem thing that can arise if you forget to link stuff up especially when working with constraints you need to make sure the it's sort of it's in its zero position when you add the constraint. Now it wasn't because it wasn't linked up yet. Just make this a bit smaller, I think. And if you like want your slider to represent the actual value of the position, you can just Line it. So now this one will be the exact same value. And you see. The IK chain sort of jumps a little bit here. I think that's because uh, we are working in centimeter units, system units, and this model is pretty small in respect to that unit. And when the IK chain is very small, you can adjust the threshold here on the position. Let's make that. I think that should be 
fix it. Yeah, you see it's much smoother now. And uh, another thing about using instance controller on the sliders is that you can you could just copy this slider as an instance. And also copy the limited controller on this control to this control so now you've got two sliders that do, s that do the exact same thing or not what happened here oh I just pasted, pasted it wrong sorry for that mistake So now you have two sliders that does the exact same thing. It can be useful, for example, if you want it on your on uh, the both both sides of your model, or you might want to collect all slider in a panel here, and you also want to have the slider on the model itself. You could just copy the slider, instance the controller on the slider. So let's just make sure we. So I'm going to link these sliders. To here. Yes, everything looks good. Okay, that's it for this episode. Thank you for watching.